Hey, good morning. Welcome to Hobby Evolution episode 1154. Hey, happy Sunday. Welcome to Hobby Evolution. Janesville Card Show Review. Uh, first card show I had uh, uh, been to since, uh, well, I guess the last Mad three weeks, the last Madison card show. First time I've set up at a card show since before I went to spring training. So the weekend before I left for spring training, I set up in uh, St. Charles at the King County Fairground. So it's been uh, five weeks, I guess. So, which is a long time for me. Usually I'm setting up twice, twice a month. So ooh, I almost spilled my coffee. So uh, it was nice to get back and uh, get get rid of some cards. I don't, and I didn't even count. I was, so every show I have kind of an objective. All right, I'm going to focus on sales. I need um, X amount. I'm not buying today unless it's something too good. I'm always buying. Sometimes I just don't. You don't have to spend money. Even if your intent is to go to a card show and you're like, I have $100 to spend, you don't have to spend all of it. In fact, if there's not good stuff there, don't spend all your money. I went to, I did a video on this. Uh, gosh, it's probably been two years now. I had a $100 budget uh, and I went to the Oak Creek card show and I think I only spent like $39. You don't have to spend all your budget at a card show. So uh, my intent yesterday was not to buy. Um, I picked up quite a bit of stuff online. Uh, I showed off, you know, I, I bought some stuff on Twitter, on Facebook, on eBay. Um, Zach was there. Yeah, Zach was, was that the first time we met? That may have been the first time we ever met when I met Zach and Porter. The Oak Creek Card Show. I think that was the first time I've, I've only been to the Oak Creek Card Show like three times. And I'm pretty sure that was the first time. And that's when I met Zach and Porter in person. Um, you don't have to spend all your money at a card show. And so yesterday I went in with the objective of I'm going to focus on sales, even though I didn't expect to make like I knew I wasn't going to. I knew it was going to be an average day of sales. Wait, Zach corrects me. He says, no, that was when the circle guy packed up early. This was when you were recording card life the circle guy so okay those were two oh wait no 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 that was so that was the circle guy packed up early and the card life recording were the same that was just a random that was just a random day that was that was the most recent time i've been to oak creek uh but the first time was when i had the hundred dollar budget which would have been like two years ago something like that. Um, so my object, I, I knew I, I knew it was going to be an average day because I had, I had new quarter boxes. I didn't bring any supplies. I didn't bring, I didn't re replenish my dollar boxes. Um, so I knew I wasn't going to blow it out of the water. And I knew that I didn't have, um, a couple like regulars that usually fill a bunch of boxes coming. Um, so I knew it was, it was going to be an average an average day. But my object, like, it's like, if I find, I was ch cherry picking, I guess if I had an objective yesterday, which I, I always have an objective, my objective was cherry picking bargain boxes. I wasn't looking for bulk, although I did look at a couple things of bulk, one larger, one smaller, and it's just stuff I have too much of already anyway. And it's like, I don't, I haven't listed this stuff because it's just like, eh. I'm, uh, I was actually had a, uh, somebody had reached out to me about listings on eBay this morning. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to get a X amount of listings. I'm focusing on quality and liquidity. Most importantly, um, you know, trying to, trying to move stuff that I have. So my objective yesterday was looking for a little more quality still on the lower end. I'm not buying $200 cards, but you know, trying to find those $20 cards out of a dollar box or a $5 box. 
So that was my objective. And I'll talk about some of the stuff I found, which by the way, will be in my eBay store. Some of it already is in my eBay store. Check it out. 99centcards.com. Buy seven or more at regular price. You'll save 25% out off at checkout. And all of my tops heritage from 2024 that I ripped last week, all of that also listed in my eBay store. So take advantage. Um, so I did list, uh, did some some more couch listing last night. And uh, I'll share uh, some of the stuff I found in, in bargain boxes yesterday. So my objective was um, cherry picking. I wasn't looking for Cubs. I ended up spending a lot of money on Cubs because it was good stuff and at good prices. Um, so I'll share some of that as well. Um, I even did a trade with, with some good stuff came in trade. So I bought Cubs. I bought bargain box stuff, uh, and I sold some cards. So we'll get into into the nitty gritty here. Um, and uh, and and East Coast Tom was uh, came to the show, and we had a, a late lunch and early dinner at Buffalo Wild Wings. B Dubs. I had the uh, I had too many wings, so sometimes I order. You, this is, I do not like, I'm going to go on a soapbox here, a Buffalo Wild Wings soapbox. I don't like their new way of ordering wings. And here's also another problem I have with Buffalo Wild Wings. I flip and love their wings. And I know they're just frozen nuggets from Cisco, but I still love them nonetheless. Until like three hours later, it's like, oh, like I, 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 like I came home, my wife, my wife's like, I'm going to make this pasta dish she makes, which is really good, but just ate a bunch of wings. And I'm like, I just, I had a late lunch at Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat. And, uh, okay. And then it's like, my stomach's just rumbling. And that's what I hate. And I'm going to pay for it today, um, as well. So I went and I, and I know this, so I try to keep a little lower on the on the spiciness scale. So I had the orange chicken. Usually I'm an Asian zing guy at Buffalo Wild Wings typically, but it really tears my stomach up. And I know they're like probably one of the worst foods you can put in your body, Buffalo Wild Wings. But I do it anyway. I'm I'm a I'm a stubborn old cuss. So had some some B dubs. Um oh so what I don't like about the ordering with Buffalo Wild Wings now is you order. It's not like you don't order like a, a dozen was a nice number. Now it's like 10. It's like 5, 10, 15. It's like son of a bitch. Sometimes 10 is not enough. 12 seem to be that perfect spot. 10 is not enough. 15 is like, eh, might be a little too much. I was hungry yesterday, so I went with 15. Now, here's the problem. Sometimes when you order 10, they give you 10. And sometimes you get lucky, you get 12. Sometimes you order 15, you get 15. Yesterday, I ordered 15, I got 20. <laughs> and I ate, and I was hungry, and I ate most of them. And then I had like a couple left, and it's like, might as well eat them. I don't want these to go to waste. I'm paying for them. So that was that was my I ate too many wings. And I know they're absolutely awful for you. Zach says, uh, speaking of Buffalo Wild Wings, he says going to Buffalo Wild Wings for good wings is like going to Olive Garden for Italian. You are going there for convenience and TVs. Oh, without a doubt, 100 percent. I don't go to Buffalo Wild Wings because I like their wings. I do. I do. They're OK. They're OK. Um, they're like, yeah, it's like going to Olive Garden for Italian. It's like, if you want a good burger, you're not going to McDonald's for a good burger. It's convenient. That's why I go to Buffalo Wild Wings. I like, there's TVs, you know, there was the Orioles Brewers game was on one TV. There was like a hockey game on another TV. There was something else. You get, you know, that's why you're going cold beer. So Buffalo Wild Wings wasn't going for the wings. That's for sure. Uh, we're going to talk about the Janesville card show today. Uh, again, eBay store, 99 centcards.com. Some of the stuff that I cherry picked out of bargain box is already loaded and I'll have uh, plenty more coming here over the next few days. It's a big shipping day today. 
still shipping out a lot of the 2024 heritage orders that came in after release. I think I'm I'm caught up until like orders as of like I think Friday afternoon. Um, if you put an order in as of Friday afternoon, I think those orders have been shipped. Christian's in the house. Good morning. Harlan's here. Good morning. Kyle, what's happening? Good morning. Zach, I, I was there. Nobody's going to get that reference. I was there. It's a wrestling reference. It's a podcast, wrestling podcast reference. Uh, and I think it was uh, British Bulldog said, it. I was there. I wonder if the birds are, no, birds aren't using my feeder yet. Terry, good morning. Cooter's in the house. I went to a show with a set amount of cash in my wallet as my max budget. That plan worked great until I came across a guy who had nice 52 tops at a good price. Damn you, PayPal. Yeah. Like I'm always, here's, here's, here's the problem that I went, I went with yesterday. And so fortunately, this is, this actually worked out in, in my favor for not overspending. Although I could have over, I could have dipped into my PayPal, but uh, I didn't take extra cash uh, to the show. Now I, I did, I took cash for change, but I didn't take like an extra, I didn't take my, cause I basically have my change baggy uh, and that's got like, you know, a couple twenties, you know, some tens, fives, ones. And so I ended up just from like, making change and, and usually I don't deposit that in the bank. I just keep it as my change bag. It grows and grows. So I had a decent amount of cash on me, but uh, I didn't bring, you know, I wasn't planning on spending a thousand dollars on, you know, unless if something walked up and then, Hey, I'll, you know, thousand dollar good price, you know, we would have made it work. But uh, so I uh, five star had reloaded, their five dollar boxes and their dollar boxes, and there was some good stuff in there. And I build a stack, and I'm like, shit, I'm getting close to two hundred bucks here. I don't know if I have two hundred bucks. And then a Ron Santo uh, booklet came by, hundred bucks. I'm like, Shh. fortunately, that was the one of the promoters, John. And I'm like, uh, come back, I'll buy it, but just let me make sure I've got a stack that I'm building with Matt over here. Um, so come back and, you know, I'll, I'll get you cash at the end of the show. So and then and then some things came up to me at the very end of the show. And I'm like, I got to pay you in all tens. One of them was a dealer. So he's like, oh, good. I need tens. Um, so it all worked out. I had enough cash. I even brought some cash home and bought some spotted cow on as uh, before I got home. So uh, uh, I know how that goes. And it's like. I, I'm dig. I'm building this huge stack, and I'm like, shit. I should have brought more money. So maybe I'll do that next time. Maybe it's like, okay, I'll bring. Like Madison, I don't have that issue because I get a lot of cash from dealers for their table fees, so I don't have an issue with that. But when I'm setting up at shows, usually I bring a couple hundred bucks or more, depending on what type of mood I'm in. Yesterday I wasn't in a buying mood, so I'm like, ah, I'm not going to bring any cash. Um, but there's always there's usually something. A lot of stuff comes by. You know, they see all my boxes. They're like, oh, you buy bulk. It's like, well, well. Uh, James says, seems like every table either had Monopoly crap at Pokemon crap bargain boxes, very limited. It was. There was not too many bargain boxes. I found some good stuff, though. I did find some good stuff. In fact, I found, I think I found better stuff out of bargain boxes yesterday. Then I have the last couple shows in terms of cherry picking. Um, I bought a lot more yesterday than I did at the Kane County Fairgrounds show. Um, I bought more than I bought at Madison last week, I think, or last month. Um, I bought more than what I bought at the last, well, the last Janesville show, I bought that. All the bulk boxes from the guy. Um, and then that other, the milk crate buy. But from a cherry picking standpoint, yesterday was one of my better in, in probably my best show cherry picking out of bargain boxes this year um, in, in the shows in, in the 2024 calendar year. Um, most of it was from Matt at five star. Most of it was from the five star boxes. But I did find there was one other table that I 
got some good stuff. And was there a third table? I'm trying to think. It might have just been those two tables. And like 97% came from Five Star. Uncle Rich in the house. Good morning. Zach and Porter. Oh, we just talked about that. Buffalo Wild Wings. Brian, good morning. Lazy Sunday at the board house. So I am sorting and listing. Fun, fun. And what a beautiful day yesterday. And I didn't take advantage. I didn't take advantage of it. Well, I was in a card show. Um, and then I came home. It's like, I'm going to go sit outside. Beautiful evening. And I didn't. I laid on the couch and listed some cards on eBay. And today I'm going to be in my basement shipping. So, um, and I think it's, it look, I mean, it looks like a beautiful morning right now. Maybe I'll just go out, uh, have a bagel after the show, have a bagel, watch the pond. What's the weather supposed to be like? I didn't realize it was supposed to be that nice yesterday. It's 64 right now at 830 in the morning. Beautiful, beautiful. 77 degrees today. And I'm going to be shipping in my damn basement with no windows 70 tomorrow and it's going to cool off into the 50s this week uh madison card show next saturday uh, just a reminder just to re i had so many people come up to me yesterday hey i heard that your show's next weekend yeah <laughs> yeah don't you pay attention yes my show is next it's april 20th it hasn't been any other weekend scheduled. It's always been April 20th. Just so you know, it's May 25th and June 22nd. Well, I thought it was the last Saturday. No, I try to get it on the last Saturday. So this is just a reminder. The Madison Card Show does not have a set weekend that we do. It's not the last Saturday of the, the month. Sometimes month after month, it just happens to be that. My goal is to have it scheduled on the last Saturday of each month, but I don't always get what I want. The Sheraton Hotel is not always available the last Saturday of the month. And that was the case for this month, April the 27th, not available. So the Madison Card Show is next Saturday, this coming Saturday, six days away, April 20th. April 20th is the Madison Card Show, April 20th, 420. That's this coming Saturday. The Madison Card Show. It is not the last Saturday of every month. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. May 25th, June 22nd. That's not the last Saturday in June. June 22nd, Madison Card Show. Not the last Saturday in June. Just want to reiterate that again and again. So it sticks. I have business cards. I leave them on dealer tables for a reason. Dealers, there are business cards with the schedule on your table when new business cards come out. Those business cards have the dates of the show. April 20th, Madison Card Show. It was on the business card on your table. Look at that. Okay. I bet I had a half a dozen dealers. I think your show's next weekend. No shit. It's always been next weekend. All right, that's my other soapbox for the day. July, August, September, not scheduled yet. Uh, I will schedule July. I, I'd i like to schedule it several months ago, but I can't. They don't allow me to do that either. So I will be able to schedule July, August, September, uh, probably in the next couple weeks. So the summer months are the trickiest because they also have weddings at the venue, at the Sheraton Hotel, the Capitol Ballroom. So they make a lot more money on weddings because of the catering. I get it. It's business. That's just a, another hurdle we have to jump. Uh, July's always, the July date is always in flux, uh, in danger of not having a show in the month of July because of other things, specifically the, na uh, the national, the, which is the last week in July. So obviously we will not run it the last weekend in July. Um, and it looks like we will be taking a European trip, um, after our June, after my June Madison show. Um, so if I don't get that third, if I don't get the week before the national, 
the venue's not available, there probably won't be a Madison card show in July. So let me repeat that. The plan is to have a July card show, Madison card show. If I don't get my date, there won't be. Somebody's going to say, well, I heard you say on your show that there wasn't going to be one. No, 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 no. There's always a potential. So, all righty. It's Madison Card Show Talk. This Saturday, April 20th, is the Madison Card Show. April 20th, May 25th, June 22nd, Madison Card Show. Those are set dates. July, August, and September, those dates are not set. April 20th, May 25th, June 22nd, Madison Card Show. Uh, Rich says, at least Mickey D's now uses fresh meat for their quarter pounders. Orlando's in the house. Good morning. Rich says they do taste much better than they used to. Uh, Uncle Rich says, and our like percent is just at the Mendoza line. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and visit my eBay store. Uh, Dan's in the house. He had fried pork cheese cutlet for dinner and followed it up with bubble tea. That kind of sounds disgusting. Fried pork cheese cutlet. I, I'm hit or miss on cheese. I am not a cheese, I'm not going to call myself a cheese lover. Despite living in the dairy state of Wisconsin, I do like cheese. Sometimes I love cheese, but I'm not a cheese lover. I do not like hot cheese. Wait. I don't dislike it, but it's like, mm, like a fried pork cheese cutlet just to me doesn't sound good. Maybe it was tasty. I don't know. But I'm just, I don't like, I think probably the only cheese, the only hot cheese that I can handle is like nacho cheese. But even that, it's like, eh, I'll pass. Like, I'm not ordering nachos at a ball game. I can do without nachos. Now, I do like, just like, and I'm talking ballpark where it's just a chip and hot cheese. I can do without that. Now, I do like loaded nachos. You go to a restaurant and they have like nachos and there's cheese and there's jalapenos and there's sour cream and all that. Like, I like that. But just the regular chips and cheese, eh, I'll do without. Not a hot cheese kind of guy. Orlando says, Tops now has wrestling. Tops, Tops now has wrestling buybacks. I was thinking Tops now. No, Tops now has wrestling buybacks that's interesting in product or are they just actively buying wrestling cards wi shipper what's up have you ever thought about selling team sets no uh is there a benefit as a seller it seems more of a benefit as a buyer it's more beneficial to the buyer i do not like doing team sets um and that's just the way i sell like the way i sell um i'm a single seller and also, it's like, what goes in a team set? And I think we had this in one of my group chats. Like, do league leader cards go in a team set? And it's, if you rip open a case and say there's a team set or a, a league leader card with Ronald Acuna and Mike Trout, well, is that an Angels card or is it a Braves card? Uh, you you got to pick and choose. And if you're doing team sets, well, then you just cut in half your team sets because you only get a set amount of cards. Say you get six cards per case of each card on average. Now the league leader cards, you only get you can only make three complete team sets. Um, if you include the league leader cards. So I don't like team because everybody doesn't, you know, most don't include the league leader cards. Now, as a team collector myself, I include the league leader cards. So that's where that's like. So it's just too, the sorting is different. It's like, oh, no, you got to get the checklist out. When I sort, like when I sell singles, I can just sort 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s, and then I do it in 10s, and then boom, I write down, okay, I've got seven cards in number one, six cards in number two, da-da-da-da-da, Cardi the Pro, Rico Scanner, boom, singles. There you go. So, yes, I would say it's more beneficial as a buyer than it is a seller. But I know there's sellers that do team sets, and they probably say, yeah, do it. Because there's people like me, they're like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I'm not a team set seller when it comes to new products. 
or really any products. Uh, James says, I bring 200 cash every show, but PayPal is locked and loaded. There you go. I like that. You got a cash budget, but hey, if something comes up, you'll dip into that PayPal like Cooter did yesterday. Zach says, I'm out. Back later for replay. Need to get the day started. Uh, let's see. Cooter, congrats on your 52s, Bo. Please tell me what color fanny pack you will wear next week so we match. I've considered, I only have, I only own one fanny pack and it was, uh, it was one of those stadium giveaways, the, the Cubs and I got it in one of the grab bags at Cubs convention. I wore it to a Cubs game at spring training last year. Um, and I didn't use it and it's like, yeah, it would come in handy as, you know, a promoter, but, um, it's kind of smaller. Um, so I don't know if it would be, that would come in useful, but maybe I'll rock a fanny pack next Saturday. Madison card show UFC buybacks. Donald, good morning. Matt's in the house. What's up? eBay now we have to buy subscription. Last month ate up 250 free promotions. Think my account has been attacked. No, eBay. I have no idea what that means. No idea what that means. James says, did you buy that Aussie rookie for $5 at five star? You damn right I did. You are damn right. How about this? How about, where's, where's it at? I thought it was right next to me. How about an Ozzy Smith rookie for four dollars? Because they have it. It was in the five dollar box, and if you buy, uh, you buy uh, five and you get one free, basically. So it comes down to four dollars. So uh, I bought an Ozzy Smith rookie for four bucks. Uh, what else was in that five dollar box? I bought ten Derek Jeter tops rookies. These sell for ten to twelve bucks a pop. So I was I bought ten of them at four bucks each. Um, this might have been in the five dollar box. Jackson Holiday Silver Prism. This might have been in the dollar box. I can't remember if this was in the five dollar box or the dollar box. So those those were some of the some of what I pulled out of the five. It was both mostly the Ozzy and the Jeters coming out of the five. Everything else was in the in the dollar boxes. Uh, Double A card says, what in your opinion is a good price per card for non-serial numbered veteran parallels? Um, I guess I need an example. So I'm just going to, I'm going to assume, um, do I have anything next to me? I mean, it, oh, it, it's a loaded question. Um, it just depends. It depends on the player. Uh, you know, Mike Trout's going to be more than Sandy Alcon. Contra, um, depending on what it is, depending on if it's a Topps Heritage, if it's a Topps Heritage that was just released last week, as opposed to a 2021 Topps Heritage, um, I'm probably, basically, I'm selling those at, ba at my floor price, $1.75 free shipping. Um, most of the, if they're basically like common color refractors, I'm doing $2.50. Uh, but it, sometimes it's a dollar seventy-five. You know, I'm looking for liquidity, and it depends on your buy-in. You know, if I'm buying them for in bulk for a few pennies, I can do it at a dollar seventy-five free shipping. If you're pulling them out of dollar boxes, you got to watch that price a little bit more. James went back to his table and it was gone. Yeah, snooze, you lose, James. Snooze, you lose. Uh, take a biscuit break, break. Oh yeah, we'll we'll go for a walk. I don't think I'll just I I won't have time to just sit outside, but I will take biscuit for a walk. Any deals on four twenty? Come out to the Madison Card Show and find out. Merle, what's up? Good morning, Mister Archer in the house. Good morning. Merle says hit one of the four shows in the Twin Cities area yesterday and only had time to hit two tables before I had to go ref AAU basketball for eight hours. Haven't even looked at what I bought yet. Sometimes that's the best. Like you don't know what you have. You come home, you look through. Fun stuff. Came home to a mail day and I see an envelope from Bo in there. Hey, that's me. Uh, Brian says, I'm going to try really hard to make the Madison show on Saturday. I only had two hours last time. Just wasn't enough time for bargain boxes. Uncle Rich says some of the Panini non-numbered parallels are weird colors and very tough compared to some random tops colors such as Walgreens yellow. Yeah, Walgreens yellow, royal blue, that stuff is my common price, $1.75 free shipping. 
Uh, speaking of weird colors, so I don't know much about football and basketball cards. And uh, my guy, Sheena, who will be set up next Saturday at the Madison Card Show, Sheena was looking through my bargain boxes, and he pulls out a Tommy Tremble rookie card, which I, I would have put in my eBay store for $1.75 free shipping. It was just looked to me like a base color. And he goes, you know, this is a, you know, this is a case hit. And I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> and uh, I said, good for you. You got it for a quarter. It's only like a $10 card, but out of the quarter box, pretty damn good deal. East Coast Tom was looking through and I had a, a hostess George Brett from like 78 or 79. He's like, is this supposed to be in here? And I'm like, I don't think so. But if you want it, it's yours. 25 cents. Can't beat that. I think I pro that probably I looked up on eBay and it was probably like a $2 card. And it's like, that's eh, going in the quarter box. So Bo is right. No set price as to the purchase. Learn and go with your feel. John wants to know whatever happened to base cards. We still get base cards. By the way, the, my Topps Heritage base cards, not moving. I think I'm about to drop the price to 99 cents just to move some of the commons. Um Tops single, even Tops big league was was moving pretty swiftly. Now, I, I'm in. I'm already in the profit margin for my my case of Tops heritage from last week, uh, but that's basically basically just short prints, inserts, uh, variations, and like rookies. But like your veteran singles, just just not moving. I, I had some. Um, didn't move a lot of Dodgers. I had some Dodgers, um, some team collectors came in and, and bought, you know, would buy a bunch, but, um, I'm looking through and I'm like, oh, I've got quite a few singles still left. John says they went the way of the gum. I reckon my petty says they are in the base of the landfill. Uh, double a says, I mean, if you were buying a collection, ah, gotcha. That had a bunch of parallels like Joe Burrow green prism. Well, it's tough. It's again, it's, it, I can't answer that because it depends on what is it, is every card like a Joe Burrow green prism or is there a Joe green, Joe Burrow green prism with a bunch of base? It's just so hard. Or is it all green prisms? Um, I can't answer. I mean, I can't answer that. It's just, you just got to look through it. I mean, I, people can tell me I've got this box and it's, this is, this is what's all in it. It's like, I got to see it. I got to go through it. I got to eyeball it. Like, okay, most of this is going to be $1.75 free shipping in my store. My profit's like 40 cents on that. A lot of it's probably going to sit for a while. Um, do I want to spend a thousand dollars on stuff that's just going to sit, sit in my eBay store and uh, it's going to take me a year to two years to recoup that money. Um, so when you're talking bulk, it's like, I mean, I'm always trying to get bulk at a penny a card because I know if I can't put it in my eBay store, I can throw it in a quarter box. If it's quarter box worthy, if it's top series one base pass, like, and that's what one of the, one of the bulk, uh, bulk collection deals that came up and it was just, there was a, there was like a book of parallels, but again, they were like $2 and 50 cent or $1.75 parallels and inserts. And it's series one. So it's not going to move as fast as it would have two months ago. So it's like, I, I just have too much of this. It's, it's series one, the, the commons, I can't do anything with, they're just going to go in a bulk box. Uh, John says, Mike Petty, oddly, a lot of them end up in my basement, but um, Mike says, I only like shimmering Tommy Tremellos. Bought lots of 90s inserts from a dealer. Merle did. Uh, John says, I have so much useful information stored in my head. None of it is wasted with terms like case hit. What about banger, hanger, and chase card? Here's a thought. Maybe collectors are sick of so many releases of the same players. But they're not because collectors keep buying the products. And as long as collectors keep buying the products and the products keep selling, they're going to keep making more and more and more. We're going to see more color, not less color. There's going to be more parallels, not less. Brian's eBay store is up 185% versus prior year to date. Thanks for all the help. Hey, that's awesome. That is awesome. 
Uh, John says, second thought, maybe it's the Rippers that only care about new releases. I hope Rippers get left holding the bag. Welcome to 1988. That's not very nice. Bargain Boxer, 103 days. He's counting down to the National. Steve's late, but good morning. Going to have to catch up later. John says, somewhere there's a guy with a warehouse or two filled with Purell and Funko Pops. That's why you rip and flip. You got to rip and flip. Take advantage. Rip and flip. Uh, got a lot this week off eBay and had zero packing material. Left negative feedback. You with me on that? Depends. I actually had this conversation with somebody yesterday. It might have been James. So, and this is why I don't like doing medium flat rate boxes. And, and I know it, it works for some people, but it's a damn time suck. We'll put, put a bunch of commons and put them on eBay for 30 bucks shipped. It's like, well, it's after fees and shipping, you're netting like $5. And if they if you don't protect it, you're going to run into this problem. They come damaged. Buyer's not happy. If you spend time to protect it, you know, in it, it might take 10, 15 minutes. I can list 200 liquid cards, 100 liquid cards, singles in 10 to 15 minutes. Pick, pack, and ship. Um, whereas I'm netting five bucks on a medium flat rate box. Like, so that's why I just stay away from it because I don't want to protect. It. I don't want to waste the time protecting it, cutting up cardboard or, you know, making sure they're, they're there. So um, that's why I just don't do it. And I get why people send it like that because you, it's a medium flat rate box. And I have received so many, so many medium flat rate boxes without protection, without damage. Some send send them well protected. Mike Summer is like a genius when it comes to protecting in medium flat rate boxes. He's like an engineer with it. And I am not an engineer. And it's like, eh, no, 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 no. So that's why I just don't do, when I do flat rate boxes, when I do my, by the way, I'm not going to do a sale this week. I just I, I came to the realization the last time I did a sale two days before the Madison Karch. It's just a it's not worth my hat. It's not worth my headaches. I have enough headaches with the show. I don't need to do a live stream sale the same week as the Madison Card Show. So we will delay it. Maybe next week. Maybe next Thursday. Let's get through this week and uh I'll know for sure Monday, a week from tomorrow. So no live uh sale this week. Um, but when I do those live sales on YouTube with the medium flat rate boxes, I'm putting them in, you know, boxes like this. So there's protection, but I'm selling those for, you know, a little more of a, they're not commons where if I'm selling commons on eBay, it's like, I don't flip and care. So it's set, basically flat rate boxes on eBay. It's buyer beware, seller beware. And that's up to you. If you want to leave a bad feedback, leave a bad feedback. Um, I just, I'm indifferent to it. Uh, Mike Petty says, I want a job with fanatics dreaming up stupid names of parallels all day. James says, definitely leave a bad review. Got to protect what you sell. John says, shipping is a slippery deal. And sometimes you, sometimes you can protect it really well and it's still damaged. I had... I sold like three Bowman like Bowman Chrome autos and I can't remember what it was, but it was like a hundred, it was almost a hundred dollar deal. It's like three or four cards. And I shipped them in the mistake. I guess the mistake I made was they were in card savers, but here's how I shipped them. Each card was in a penny sleeve and a card saver. And say there was four cards. They were sandwiched between cardboard that took up the entire card saver the cardboard was i used the blue tape i used the blue tape on the cardboard and slipped them into a bubble in a used bubble mailer which i then put inside a new bubble mailer they were still damaged and i'm like maybe this guy's just trying to f with me nope he sent all the cards back and it looked like 
it looked like somebody had taken the cardboard and just did that. It's like, how does this even happen? Um, now, if I sell anything like, and it depends on what it is, anything in a slab, and I don't sell slabs often, goes in a box. Um, I don't trust slabs in a bubble mailer. Um, if it's like $200 up, it goes in a box. But if it's like $100, it just goes in a bubble, you know, double, d double bubbled, put it in, in double bubble mailer. Uh, let's see. John says, why would you not use a box to ship $100 worth of cards? It's just not what I do. Um, it's the only time I've, I've had an issue and it's weird, you know, it's the only out of 50 to a hundred thousand. I don't know how many transactions I've done probably over a hundred thousand. I have like close to 50,000 total feedback. About half the people leave feedback. Um, you know, usually it depends on what it is. Sometimes over a hundred dollars, it's I'll put it in a box. Usually I just do a, a bubble mailer. It's well protected. It's cardboard wrapped. It's basically in its own little cardboard box inside, inside a bubble mailer. Uh, there's really no difference. There's abs actually no difference shipping in a box compared to a bubble mailer because the box doesn't really add much weight over a bubble mailer. Maybe, maybe an ounce, maybe an ounce, um, but it's about the same. Brian, uh, yes, I'll let you know if I do the, the sale next week. Kind of tend to pencil, pencil it in for next, next week. So uh, I picked up, I showed off some of the stuff I, I pulled out of the $5 boxes. I pulled 10 Jeter Tops rookies. Uh, and I got those for four bucks each. Ozzie Smith rookie, four bucks. Uh, uh, and then let's see. This, so sometimes when I'm digging through bargain boxes, like I'm not going to, like I knew I'm paying $4 for Jeter. I know I'm going to sell these for 10 to 12 bucks each. Um, so I know there's there's some margin in there. I know the the Ozzie Smith, 40 to 50 bucks, ballpark range. Um, Jackson Holiday, that's probably 10 to 15 bucks. So I knew that I had some, some wiggle room. Uh, that I wasn't like, I need to make, I need to make a profit on every single card I pull. So a few cards I, I pulled, and I can't remember if this was in the dollar box or the $4 box, Randy Moss, Field Division, Don Russ Elite, it's second year, 1999, it's numbered out of 658. And I think I listed this for like 10 bucks, which is about uh, where it's listed on, on other things. Uh, Adley Rushman, Bowman Spotlight, uh, this was in the dollar box. I knew this is probably going to be in the four to five dollar range. Um, this was in the dollar box, and I, I didn't have. I figured this would be a good buy. Uh, Ann Lee Waters, pickleball player. The pickleball players in the Ginter set last year were were really hot sellers. This is a relic, and I figured this is probably going to going to move well. Uh, this was in the dollar box. This I listed that uh, for twenty. Uh, this is one of those things where 90s inserts, I'm not too well-versed um, on 90s inserts. But I figured this looks, It's first of all, it's Jeter. Uh, and second of all, it's like, man, it looks, it looks special. It's Fleer Futures from 2001, and it's in Japanese. So I guess this is the, like the Japanese parallel. Um, and it's in the $7 to $10 range. I think I listed it for... I might have listed it for 10. I can't remember. Uh, and then there were a bunch of Bowman stained glass in the dollar boxes. Um, and these are about five bucks. So um, what else? So those, those, those are all listed in my eBay store. Um, this was a card and I pulled this. Um, this was from a different dealer. $5 sticker. Jordan Walker Panini. Three and two. Uh, it's a rookie card and it's numbered out of 32. So, and I think I got this for four bucks also. Um, so that I have not listed yet, probably in the $15 range. There's none listed on eBay. So I might just throw it on eBay for 20. 
these uh, these were uh, more uh, '90s inserts, serial numbered. Uh, these are Collector's Edge, and I knew Collector's Edge not a real in demand uh, set from the '90s. Uh, but they're numbered out of 500 Sentinels. This is Brett Favre. There was also an Emmett Smith. And I think these are probably in the five to $10 range. And I, I paid four. So those, it's going to be minimal margin on those, uh, license to skill little die cut Derek Jeter. Uh, this is probably in the seven to $10 range. So again, kind of a small margin on that, uh, Jackson Job. First Bowman out of 199. I pulled this because uh, Jackson Joe base has just been selling like crazy out of my eBay store. Uh, this was a $4 box pull. I haven't looked up comps on this and uh, uh, haven't uh, looked up comps on this, but I was thinking probably 10, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Um, I don't know. We'll look it up later. Uh, Jeter, there's a bunch of Jeter in there. This is a Jeter rookie, uh, dugout collection from, uh, score scores, not, you know, again, scores kind of like the, the collector's edge, not desired, uh, but it is a parallel, uh, rookie Derek Jeter's got like 300 rookies in like seven different years. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, actually this, this, I, I I'm going to take a loss on this one. So uh, this was Ken Griffey Jr. 2003 Don Russ Classics. Uh, this was a $4 box pull. Sample on the back, and I'm like, oh, this has got to be something. So this was one of those where you take a gamble and you lose. It's probably a $3 card. So I'm going to lose I'm going to lose on that on that card. As a as a purchase, I did really well. There's going to be some losses in here. Uh, Gold Leaf rookie Derek Jeter from uh from Leaf. Again, this is a, a lower end Derek Jeter um out of the $4 box and this might be a $5 card. It might not even be a $5 card. So that this could also turn into a loss. Uh didn't look at these, but I figured for 4 bucks uh these are worth it. This is a 2006 Bowman Chrome Justin Verlander rookie card and this is probably going to be in the 10 to, I think I did look up this one and the next one in the 10 to $15 range. So a nice little win on that. Max Scherzer, Bowman base rookie. This is probably the $10 range. Um, so a, a little win on that. This is going to be probably net zero. Um, there were like five or six of these. I grabbed two because I didn't know. Uh, Mike Trout, rookie gold cups. Um, not as, is, is valued as, uh, not worth as much as they were a couple of years ago, but that is with everything in, in cards from that time period. Uh, this is probably, you know, I'll probably net three or four bucks. So take a small loss or no profit at all on those. Uh, haven't priced this one. This is from the national last year, Panini, uh, and it's serial numbered out of 199. Bobby Witt Jr. Sells really well. Uh, national cards uh, can tend to sell for for pretty well because obviously there's a much smaller print run, and this is the you know a numbered cracked ice type parallel. Uh, here's the rest of the Jeters. Again, I think there were ten altogether, so ten bucks a pop. Uh, I spent forty, and you know maybe a uh, hundred make a hundred gross on those. So. Those were out of the $4 box. Some of my dollar box pulls. Typically, I stay out of... Here's a little tip. Here's a little tip. Uh, if you're in a bargain box and you find really good stuff, have a poker face. Don't get excited when you find really good stuff in a bargain box. There was, there was a couple dudes next to me, and they were looking at like soccer and basketball. And they're like giddy, like little schoolgirls, like when their crush says hi to them. Oh, look at this one. And I'm like, come on, guys, shut up. Um, poker face. Because if you get all giddy like that, you're going to draw attention. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a crowd around these bargain boxes. And we're all going to lose. So... 
practice your poker face at the at the dollar boxes. So here's some dollar box hits. I, I, I typically stay away from, from basketball because I really don't know it, especially modern stuff. If it's 90 stuff, like you saw some of the stuff I pulled, I'm a little more, I'm going to gravitate to it more. Jordan stuff. Uh, there wasn't any Jordans in, in these boxes. Uh, but I am familiar with some of the inserts, like the Scoring Kings. And I thought this might have been worth a little more. It was out of the dollar box, Shaquille O'Neal, which Shaquille O'Neal is like, to me, seems undervalued in the hobby. Scoring King, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, I mean, it's still gonna, it's still a win. It's about a $10 card out of a dollar box. So that's that, that was a, a bigger win than some of the other stuff I found. Uh, some more national numbered cards. This is a Mark McGuire, numbered out of 199 and I figure out of the dollar box. Uh, that's a win. Here's for my own collection. Sandberg numbered out of 199. Uh, let's see. Let's let's just group some of these together. Uh, there was uh, there was uh, another bargain box. Regular was next to me, and he goes. He was looking through a box and he's like, you're going to want to see this box. There's some good eBay stuff. He's And he doesn't do base. So it's good because he's a football guy. I'm a baseball guy. So, uh, you know, if I, if, if I happen to find a football, I'm like, Hey, and he's like, Ooh, or, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, he's like, you might want to look, look through this. He's like, I don't know. He's like, but it looks like stuff that you might do well with these. Again, these are all dollar. These are all Orioles. Orioles super hot right now loaded with talent and in the hobby people are buying Orioles. I I am selling Orioles, you know, again I'm focusing on liquidity and uh what I know I can sell and Orioles is is something that I can. Now, typically I don't pull relics unless I know that it can sell for in the $10 plus range like that uh um pickleball uh, pickleball player, uh, but Heston Kerstad, Orioles prospect. He's in AAA. He's like just killing it in AAA this year so far. Heston Kerstad. It's a lead extra edition. Um, it's it's probably not gonna you know. It's gonna be a tough sell because I've got to ship it in a bubble mailer as opposed to PWE. Uh, but I still think there's a little bit of of room. Maybe one of my bulk, uh, my Orioles collectors that buys uh, multiple Orioles, you know, it, it's in a, in a, in a purchase. Uh, it came to the league. These are, these are pretty, you know, I wouldn't say sought after, but I do move these pretty regularly in my eBay store. Colton Kowser, another young stud for the Orioles. I mean, Jackson Holiday. I'll pull any Jackson Holiday out of a dollar box right now, uh, even though he's uh, started off with a struggle in Baltimore. Uh, he's still moving. Uh, Adley Rushman is moving well. A couple of rookie cards. You know, these are probably going to be in the two to three dollar range, but um, I think uh, it's 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 liquid. I'll move them fast. It will draw attention to the to the eBay store. Here's another uh, rookie insert of Adley. Um, here's a Rushman Gunner Henderson star clusters insert. Gunner Henderson action stars, and then a couple stained glass. Enrique Bradfields. So those are the Orioles. Um, these I didn't comp. Again, I, I went for for relics, but um, some of the uh, late '90s, early 2000s relics can be can be good. Sometimes they're just like, oh, it's you paid a dollar, it's worth a dollar. I figured this one. It's Dave Parker, game used memorabilia from Upper Deck Sweet Spot, and he's in a Brewers uniform. Uh, you don't see too many Dave Parker uh, Brewers cards, so I picked this one out of the dollar box. Uh, Fred McGriff, Hall of Famer, game bat, bound for the hall uh, from, I think this is also 2003. So took a chance on those. Um, what are some of the – these are all dollar box pulls. Samuel Zavala of Bowman Platinum. Uh, this is numbered out of 199. Bowman Platinum's not uh, – you know, not a great seller, but it's still numbered. And Zavala's uh, pretty, uh, a pretty good talent. Um, couple of relics, but these are not for sale. These are part of 
My Cubs collection, Eric Hosmer and Trey Mancini, we'd like to forget those too, but hey, we have them in relic form. Uh, there were a few stained glass. Let's hear some other ones. I guess just two more, Ty Pete and Chase Davis. Chase Davis sells pretty well. Um, and I think I, I actually just sold that uh, a, another Ty Pete like that for five or six bucks recently. Uh, Salvador Perez, uh, the World Baseball Classics, numbered out of four ninety nine. dollars It's about a $5 card. Uh, Sapphire, good seller. Anthony Volpe, good seller. So that's a win-win for a dollar. Jason Churio, uh, Fuchsia, I think. Paper out of two ninety nine. dollars Can't beat that for a buck. Uh, James's guy, Chase DeLauder, uh, a shimmer out of 125 and a purple out of uh, 250. Um, another one I took a gamble on from the uh, from 2000 Stadium Club. It's a uh, low serial number out of 150. Scott Brocious. Um, another player that for kind of like Jackson Holiday, I'm going to take Ellie De La Cruz for a buck. Because they're liquid, um, can probably move that insert for five bucks. Probably looking at three bucks on the tops pro debut. So small margin, but they'll move really fast. Another Jeter for a buck. Collector's choice, rookie class. A couple of first Bowman Chrome, Lazaro Montez. He sells well. Jordan Beck. I, I actually just sold a, a whole bunch of paper firsts of Jordan Beck. So I'm like, okay, there's a buyer. Here's a first Chrome refractor Jordan Beck for a dollar. Uh, Mike Trout, this is, uh, is this a mojo? I mean, for a dollar, you can't beat that. Maybe five bucks there. And then, uh, Derek Jeter ovation, uh, some insert. And I figured I'd take a chance on a dollar. Jeter's pretty liquid also. And then for my own collection, Christopher Morell tops chrome black. And I think is that, uh, I think that does it for my dollar box buys. So let's get to the chat and then I'll show off my, I showed off some of my Cubs pickups out of the bargain boxes, but then I also had some stuff, and a couple of the cards are still in my car. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, all the way up here. John says, nicely centered Ozzy, which isn't very common. Yeah, the, uh, the 79 Ozzy rookie, just terribly centered on most uh, cards. Floyd, what's up? Good morning. Floyd's a set collector. Are there any dealers at your show or at Janesville? That has 80s baseball and football commons and stars. Ooh, 80s? Probably not. I don't think I saw any yesterday, and I'm trying to think of dealers at my show. Um, not, not sure. Uh, Tony usually brings, he's got vintage. He usually has binders of, of vintage, but we're like vintage, so no 80s. That's for you, Cooter. Um, you know he he's got mo he's got all 50s, 60s, and and early 70s. I don't even know if he has later 70s and in, in that he brings to shows. But uh, as far as 80s, uh, probably not, unless some dealers have like complete sets. Uh, but singles um, might you know maybe you'll find them in bargain boxes, but uh, probably not separated. Uh, Rich says, I think there is a separate Japanese set in 2001. John says, keep on set collecting, Floyd. Never give it up. John doesn't like Collector's Edge. He has so many of those. Uncle Rich says, I hear the words Collector's Edge and run the other direction. And John's is, John's going to race him. Uh, John says, I will create a poll in the Facebook group regarding worst brand of the Junk Wax era. Uh, ship the trouts taped to the back of a postcard. You'll clear more money. Uh, Jeff's card journey says, are you going to list the Bobby Witt Juniors? Yes. And I have a bunch of Bobby Witt Juniors in my eBay store. Um, I had listed like 75 in my store uh, a couple weeks ago. So check them out. Link in the description, 99centcards.com. Uh, James says, the worst is when you get a guy following you around and digging next to you at every table because he knows. <laughs> Because he knows. Like, where's James going? I'm going to follow James. Paul says, nice pull on that numbered moss. I found a 72 Roger Staubach in the dollar bin. Seneco stamps, but still, nice, nice pickup. 
Orlando loves the dollar boxes. John says, I like the Sunoco stamps. Huge set, some actual rookies in there. James says, it came to the league sell like crazy. Make good money on those. And they're more of a common insert. Uh, Bargain Boxer, did you hear the guy who won the Opeachy hockey case got buyer's remorse and now can't get rid of the case? He's reached out to Gretzky, Drake, Daniel Negranu, others, and no one has responded. Oops. Oopsie. Paul says, one guy at Oak Creek does 80s commons. He's typically set up in the church. Oh, is that, uh, I wonder if that's Cigar. It's up there in the church. Uh, so what else? Um, let's see. I, I made a trade. I made a trade. And actually, uh, the guy that I made a trade with, and I forget his name. That one, that one. And these. Uh, so I bought some stuff. I think I bought a bunch of uh, Desert Shield Cubs from him. Um so he always brings some he's he and he he has like good stuff like stuff you don't see. Um so he had a, a stack of cubs. He's like I'll he's like I'm not looking for money for these. Uh I'll trade you just for some some of your junk. <laughs> it's like I got a bunch of junk here. So this is a Topps Chrome Felix PA refractor out of 415. Uh this is a Ryan Sandberg Topps Archives reserve from what year is this? 2001, I think. And a Sport Flix from 1996 of Sammy Sosa and Manny Ramirez. Uh, 1973, is this Kellogg's? Where's John? John. 1973 Pro Superstars, Ron Santo. So that was in there. Uh, gold, Topps Chrome Gold out of 50, D. Lee, Derek Lee. Adam Green, and this is funny because last week at Wrigley, uh, when I was talking to Kerry Wood, uh, he goes, uh, do you have any Adam Greenberg cards? And he's like, does Adam even have any cards? And so, so Adam Greenberg, if you're not aware, Adam Greenberg was a Cubs prospect, was called up in his first at bat. Uh, he was uh, like hit in the head. And uh, that was it and never made it back until the Marlins. And it was gimmicky when the Marlins called him up uh, several years later. So uh, Adam Greenberg has like two at bats in his major league career. Um, this is uh, a Bowman. I don't know what this is, but it's uh, it's numbered out of 245. So it's just kind of ironic that Kerry would ask me about Adam Greenberg cards and this kind of uh, a more rare Greenberg uh pops up at my table and then uh diamond anniversary ernie banks and so uh we did a trade he got like basically a box this size of uh a, what 300 count box of 25 cent cards uh joseph says kellogg's were 2d and 73 so just cardboard so there you go 73 kellogg's uh what and then uh i showed off the jordan walker uh from the same dealer um, he had an Owen Casey who I think Owen Casey is, uh, going to have a breakout 2025 and, uh, he could be the rookie of the year. So here's my bold prediction. Owen Casey, 2025 national league rookie of the year. And so this is, uh, this is actually a San Diego Padres card. He's now in the Cubs organization and this is numbered out of 190. Um, and then there was also a Chris Bryant 2020 Donruss numbered out of 75. Uh, David Bodie, uh, tier one relic numbered out of 299. I thought there was there in there, there should be one more David Bodie that I bought from him. Yes, here it is. Uh, David Bodie, Gypsy Queen Auto, numbered out of 50. And as I was pulling out those Cubs, the dealer goes, did you see this? And I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm going to I'm going to buy that. So he pulled it out. Uh, and I'm, I'm a I am not a fan of Topps Archives signature series, but I am a Dylan Cease collector. So uh, this is a, a Dylan Cease Cubs Bowman 
2016 Bowman Chrome, uh, stamped out a 16 signature series. So, and for 15 bucks, I've seen some of these surface on Facebook groups, but I don't want to pay 20 or 30 bucks for archive signature series autographs. I think they're, I think they're kind of silly, but for 15 bucks, I bought it. Uh, and then, so this is the last thing uh, I, I bought on Twitter. I think I posted this morning, uh, Ron Santo booklet uh, that uh, John, one of the promoters of the show, uh, came up to me in the morning. And then uh, one of the last things that that came up, uh, guy comes up and he's like, I'm looking for the Cubs collector. I'm like, that's me. And uh, he goes, I've got something that, that you might not have. And he pulls out top loader, eight by 10, upper deck, dual portrait, Carrie Wood, Mark Pryor auto. And I'm like, man, I probably, I probably don't have enough money for this because I'd actually just bought this stack of autos that I'll show you here in a second. And uh, I'm like, I really like this. I've never seen one of these. I didn't know this existed. And uh, I'm like, what do you want for it? He's like, hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm like, how about 80? And you know how I don't like negotiate. I did not negotiate out of, okay, that pull, that dealer, Scotty P. So I think I bought from four different dealers and then the trade I didn't negotiate on. So five transactions, five previous transactions. I did not negotiate. Wait, Santo, Scotty P, Dollar Box, those trade. Yeah, five. Five total transactions. This was the sixth. I had not negotiated. I just, here's what I got. And hopefully they give me a deal. I thought the sticker price was fair. I'm not going to, ooh, will you, $12. Will you take 11? Um, so no negotiating. Until now, it's like, oh. I'm like, how about 80? And he like, court, and so he's like, he's in the new. Oh, I would have paid a hundred, totally. I probably would have paid one twenty. I don't know if I would have went one fifty, uh, but I would have paid more than a hundred, and that was his price. So I'm like eighty, and he's like, uh, you know, and he does the he does what I talked about a couple weeks ago. The old, mm, uh, yeah, it's you know. He did that. It's like, all right, whatever number he gives me, I'm going to buy it because I don't want to do, do this pissing match anymore. So he goes, ah, mm, I don't want to, I'll do 90. I'm like, okay. So I would have gave you 100. I'll do 90. So got it for 90 bucks. And uh, so right before that, and actually I think Scott was, Scotty P was, uh, was still there because he walked up, I think, as, as we were finishing up this deal. Scotty P comes up and he's got a stack and he's got, I've got these, any interest? We got Derek Lee tier one auto numbered out of 200. We've got Kyle Schwarber five-star auto. I love Schwarber. Javi Baez, I still love Javi even though he absolutely sucks. 2017 five-star auto. Still love him. Uh, Wilson Contreras. Uh, Tops Inception Auto Relic out of 199. Kyle Schwarber Tops Inception Auto out of Auto Relic out of 149. Wilson Contreras Five Star Auto, and then the best of the bunch, John Lester. Tops. What is this? Triple Threads. Auto relic out of 99. And John Lester doesn't have too many autos, and he's a tough auto. And I and I got uh did I show that? Yeah, I showed that one off. So the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all seven. Scotty P's like uh, and he goes, you know, they're all about the same, but the Lester's a little bit more. He's like, I got 40 on the Lester, and I'm like, Well, what do you what do you want for all of them? He's like, I do all for 80. I'm like, well, shit, hell yeah. Comes down to like 10 but what 10 bucks 80 for seven cards a little over 10 bucks in auto hell yeah including that lester so uh thank you scotty p he always hooks me up gives me great deals 
Uh, so those were my Cubs pickups. I got some nice stuff yesterday. Wasn't even expecting it, uh, but got some good deals. So let's go to the chat real quick. We're going to wrap it up so I can uh, get off to some shipping. Uh, Merle says, I got a standard size 50th anniversary card as a box topper in Heritage. It is a common guy from 75. Has the 50th anniversary tops logo embossed on it. Would that be considered a buyback? Yes. Yes, it is. And those actually sell really well. I think out of my case, I pulled three of them, and I think all three sold for 10 bucks each. So uh, those do sell well. Um, you will actually profit more from those than you will the box loaders. You know, I think the box loaders are, uh, you know, I think I sold a couple like for five bucks, and like those are, you know, tough, tough to ship. Um, so I wish I would have got all buybacks instead of box toppers. So yes, that's uh, those are the buybacks. Uh, there are some Marlins Adam Greenberg cards. It was a big deal at the time for him to have a card. Um, he had Cubs cards. Uh, I thought it was stupid when the Marlins called him up. It was gimmicky. Um, I know it's a sad story, but that's baseball's a sad game. Like it just happens. I I was not a fan of the Marlins calling up Adam Greenberg. Um, I just thought it was gimmicky. Uh, if I recall, the Marlins are the only one with him after he made the majors and in a major league uniform. That is correct. Uh, Cause he just, uh, he only appeared in one game for the Cubs before he got, before he got hit. Uh, red light. Thanks rich for the link. Brian says Sunday sermon. Good morning. Good morning. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, visit my eBay store, 99centcards.com. Don't forget Saturday, April 20th, April 20th, April 20th, April 20th is the Madison Card Show. That's this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, April 20th, Madison Card Show. Uh, what else is going on? I think that's it. We'll uh, we'll run this back tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Central, Hobby Evolution. Like, subscribe, visit my eBay store. Have a wonderful Sunday and we'll talk tomorrow.